Hi, uh, my name's Mark. Um, as you know, I have a YouTube channel um, specifically for teaching students about how to play piano. And for the most part, I am a piano teacher. And um, yeah, so today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I just perhaps wanted to share a little bit of my own um, experiences about um, teaching music and what it's like for me um, living in the Gainesville, Florida area to be teaching music and having graduated from the University of Florida. Um, a little bit of my experience about what it's like to go to music school and to get a degree in music and um, just, yeah, like talk about what it's like to go to college and um, decide to become a music major and what other things might come along with it because I do have a couple of things about me that are a little bit different from others about being a music major, but I'll get to that later. But um, yeah, so I guess I guess I should start with a little bit more introductions. Um, right now I have a private studio and I'm basically just teaching, um, you know, kids and young adults and even older adults how to play piano. And um, aside from that, like I have a, a lot of other part-time things that I do like tutoring and um, you know, babysitting or dog sitting and things like that. Um, but yeah, like I, I feel like other than that, the, the most, um, like important part of me throughout all of my career since college has been teaching music because that's the most, um, consistent thing that I've done since. And yeah, so, and as you know, I went to the University of Florida and I was there for four years. This is one of the banners that I bought for it, uh, for college, <laughs> uh, just to decorate my room. This is my room where I stay with, and I live with my parents. And so, you know, um, uh, yeah. And I, uh, when I went to college, I was actually really um, intent on not just being a music major, but also on actually getting into medical school whoa what did i just say medical school yeah no i literally just said that medical school i was totally interested in getting into medical school while i was an undergrad and that was probably like one of the weirdest things that people would have like seen about me especially if i talked to them and introduced myself and told them what kind of major i i, I was like once i told them that i was pre-med and music they were like why are you putting those two things together that doesn't even make any sense like that makes zero sense <laughs> well yes and no okay because first of all I had an aunt and uncle who were both doctors you know and a lot of my family not just here in the United States but also you know abroad in the Philippines are doctors I even have an, an aunt who lives in Germany who's who was um a nurse before she retired and I mean the majority of people who like had consistent like work who I knew in my family they were pretty much in the medical field that was on one side but on the other side since I was really young like since the age of like six years old I was always told that I was so talented in music I was always told that I had a gift, that I had a talent. I could sight read, I could memorize, I could perform, I could emote. You know, all those things that were, you know, perfect for becoming a prodigal musician, for becoming an excellent musician. And yeah, that really like sunk into me. The more I was told that, the more it really sunk into me that hey, yeah, I really do have a talent for this. I really feel most confident and comfortable doing this. Compared to everything else that I do, I feel most comfortable in music. It's always been like that. It had always been like that since that age. And everybody, like my friends, my family, they always recognized me as being, um, you know, like that one cousin who's like talented in music. And by the way, I grew up without any siblings. So like, I really couldn't compare myself to anyone. You know, if I was good at this one thing, like, that's all I knew. And I didn't really know, like, how to, like, say, like, hmm, like, my brother is, is like, like this. And that seems to be, like, 
realistic. No, no. You know, if I was really good at music and that's what I knew, that's all I knew. <laughs> so <laughs> I was really good at that. And, um, you know, when I went to high school, um, I still played piano and everything. Um, but I, um, that's when I started getting interested in doing medicine because I was starting to think about like, what kind of career would be most stable? And, you know, my studio teacher, God bless her, she told me that there was this, this program that was available at the university that would allow people to get a bachelor's of music degree and also work to do something outside of that. It's called a bachelor of music in combination with an outside field, basically. Even though my degree actually says Bachelor of Music, um, it's practically, you know, a Bachelor of Music in combination with something else, in combination with another track, whether it be pre-med, pre-law, um, engineering. Some people do it, you know, like they get it alongside engineering, um, a lot of different things. There are a couple of things that are not possible, like nursing and architecture, but, you know, that aside, um, it's really a really cool program. And so, yeah. I, I was like committed to doing that when I was in high school. I, I, I told myself that like, okay, I'm still going to these piano competitions. I'm doing all of these things um, to prepare for college for piano to get into the music school um, at, uni at the University of Florida. And um, I did the best to, to excel in high school. I was in student government. I uh, was in a lot of different organizations and clubs. I did a lot of leadership. I was in National Honor Society, et cetera, band. Um, but really, um, all the while, I was like really committed to like becoming a doctor. Um, I knew that I could get into the university with my talent in music, um, but in piano playing. <laughs> but um, I was really intent on getting into the medical field. Okay, so, you know, I go to four years in college and it's really nice and everything. Um, I didn't go to a dorm because like I, I stayed here at home. Like I just drove, I commuted. I went from home to school, home to school, home to school and studied at home. Um, you know, I had a lot of, uh, you know, things that I didn't have to spend for. Like I didn't have to spend for a dorm. I could just stay at home and go to college. You know, my, my place isn't, isn't too far. It's like, it's in the town next to, Gainesville, so it's really not too far for me to drive back and forth. Okay, so that's great and everything, Mark. Okay, well, that's nice. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let me move on. Okay, so after, um, you know, uh, the first two years of college, I started to realize that my grades weren't as good as I wanted them to be, especially for the BCPM classes, which were the biology, um, chemistry, physics, and math classes, okay? So if you are interested in being pre-med, you have to consider the fact that you have to be ready to get good scores on the good grades in those classes, because even if you do really well in the MCAT, which I, you know, later on did, um, you can't really expect to get into the best school um, because those courses are really going to define, you know, what kind of student you are to the people who are looking at your application for medical school. Okay. Okay, so um, even though all of those things happen, I still kept on pushing forward. I did research, like I did biomedical research um, on top of um, the pre-med classes, like to augment my uh, extracurriculars. I was in a lot of different clubs like Asian American Student Union. Um, and I was also in leadership roles. I was one of the ambassadors for the School of Music um, to help with advertising and marketing the school and recruiting students from other places like Jacksonville and um, even in town in Gainesville. Um, so yeah, like I was pretty active with a lot of different things that I was doing, but uh, long story short, um, I didn't get into medical school. Uh, yeah, no, not on the first try, not on the second try, no, nope, not even on the third try, not on any of them, nada. I applied to like 30 different schools. I applied to the schools that were in the range. Like I would, I applied to the schools that I were like, maybe like my higher reach schools that I was like, okay, maybe I can get to those schools, maybe. 
and I applied to the schools that I knew I could possibly get into with my scores and grades. And I even applied to the schools that were like, I was overqualified, you know, for. And, you know, I got to a couple of the interviews for the ones that I was like, pretty sure I was going to get in. I got interviewed for those. And still out of those three interviews, I didn't get into medical school. And I'm thinking, you know, for one thing, I, I'm really sure that having the music degree by itself might have been one factor. Um, be really careful, like, if you're going to get a degree in college, be really careful, especially if you want to be pre-med, about getting a, an undergrad degree that's really going to match going to medical school. So I had a classmate, for example, and she was brilliant. She was a flautist, and she had a music major. And then later on in her um, career, in her college career, she decided, like she let me know one day, that she wants to do a double major. She decided to do a double major in biology and in music. And I was like, okay, that's really cool. And then here I was, lo and behold, still intent on being that one person who was like the music major trying to get into med school. Okay, well, whatever. But <laughs> so she got in, you know? Yeah, she got into medical school. And, and um, um, it's, you know, every everybody has a different story. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, just be really careful about undergrad if you want to become something else uh, while you are um, pursuing, uh, you know, a, an another degree, especially like something like music in the arts or something, and you want to go further into a professional school, you really need to consider the opportunities that you have to have a little bit more focus in that in the areas where you're going towards just so that you don't get too distracted and too let's say i don't know too focused on on um you know looking at the trees for the forest so to speak um if you are like too uh focused on the thing that's happening now and instead not looking at what's going to happen <laughs> later on um it might it might be bad it might it might not turn out as well as you want okay so that's one piece of advice uh, for people out there who are, for you guys out there. I don't know. Some of you guys are in high school. Some of you guys are in middle school, whatever. I don't know. But if you're like watching your YouTube and you suddenly just like came across this channel, saw my video and was bored, <laughs> then yeah, I just want to let you know. That's what you probably want to do. Okay. Okay, that's great. All right. Now, what else happened to me after college? So I went to a, a clinical practice after college, um, and I decided to work there as you know an administrative assistant because I didn't really get into um, like any medical schools or any medical field, uh, anything like that. None of it. Um, in fact, on my last application cycle, I was still even in that practice, and um, that was really wonderful and all. But, um, you know, for whatever reason, like, I think there was just a lot of conflict of interest. I think that, like, being a music major, especially if you're doing something like being a private music instructor while you're doing something else, can actually hinder you from focusing on, you know, what you're doing. As an admin assistant, I had to focus on just, you know, operation management, uh, assistance, I just had to help with, uh, well, not just, no, obviously it's work. Uh, obviously it is hard work. Um, so please ignore the fact that I said that. It's not just operations management, mind you, okay? Um, but I had to do a lot of operations management assistance. And that took focus and, you know, effort and, and um, you know, in the end, uh, what happened was, um, you know, my parents, like, when they heard about me, like, having a, a lack of focus in this job or whatever, they started telling me that, like, hey, Mark, like, maybe you should, like, try to find a different job somewhere else or, you know, like, take a break or, like, resign. <laughs> Can you believe that? Well, yeah, that's what they said. And um, I decided to do that. I decided to resign from that job, even though Technically, it was like one of the most, I think, 
since I can remember since college, it was probably one of the most stable jobs that I had. Um, the pay was regular, hours were regular. I could, you know, feasibly work those hours regularly and then maybe teach piano on the weekends and still, you know, um, for whatever reason, I decided to listen to my parents' odd advice about, you know, not, about not continuing the job, about resigning. And I did that. Okay. So then there were a couple of months that I didn't have a work. And then later on, I went to um, this other place. I'm not going to say any names about where it is, but I went to this other place for um, uh, to become a to become a waiter. And um, you know, for for the time that I was working there, it was really great and everything, and I really loved it. And um, there was this time later on that my parents said why don't you, we go on vacation? Because it's your grandmother's 90th birthday celebration. And I did. Of course I did. I mean, it was for my grandmother. And my grandmother at that time was, and still is, is my only living grandparent. And, you know, I didn't, I wouldn't want to miss that. Okay, well, that's great. But when I went there, everything was fine and everything until the whole pandemic started. You know, I was... I was fine there, and then in January, like, not only was there a pan this pandemic, but the week that I was supposed to go back to my job, Mount Ta'al in, like, Manila erupted and started spewing ash, and I couldn't get a flight to go back. And, you know, technically, like, my manager said, like, okay, so if you can't make it back, like, I'm going to assume that this is your resignation. So, you know, what could I do? I couldn't really do anything about it. Um, and by the time I got back, this whole pandemic started. So I had no choice but to really just like stay at home or and, like teach piano lessons online. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's the story. Um, it feels almost as if there's just a lot of resistance, like for me to get to where I want to be. Because what I wanted before was clearly like you know to become a doctor to to study medicine to to go on and forward into that career because I was a high achiever when I was in school I mean like mind you I was in a, a lot of AP classes tons of AP classes I finished a lot of AP classes when I was in school in high school um and I was always a high achiever before that in middle school and elementary school I would always get awards for like being in the top of the class um, I read a lot of books. Um, at times, yeah, I would be like really nerdy. I was actually even super nerdy about music. I memorized all the composers. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think right now, um, with the way that things are going, I don't want to be too opinionated. But for anyone out there who's just watching or curious about my channel, I think that the main point of this video is really for some advice about what to do right now if you're in the music field, and also how things are going, like what kind of trends there are right now in the music industry. You know, for one, um, you have to be like constantly uh, involved and in the loop to be, you know, in music these days. Um, you need to stay involved. If you're in choirs, like, try to stay involved in choir. Um, if you're taking lessons, like, keep up with lessons and also keep in touch with your studio professors once you're done um, studying in college. Um, like, right now, I'm looking for a job to uh, work at one of the local music stores here as a piano teacher. And um, be proactive, like try your best to um, maintain the energy that you have as a musician to keep your music active. And what does that mean? Like just keep practicing it, keep practicing it. And how do you practice that? By teaching, by practicing your, by practicing your own songs. Um, Sing in choir. If you go to a church, be in the choir. Um, uh, 
I mean, that's what I do because not only do I play piano, but I sing too. I've been taking, I've been taking voice lessons, and um, I also think that it's really important to just have a positive attitude, because like with this pandemic happening, and I've already been vaccinated by the way, and I'm currently like still looking for part time jobs to do. Um, with the current situation and how things are going, it's just really important to have a positive attitude. That like no matter what el- what is going on, like you have to be positive because a lot of things right now like might seem like they're just getting worse, you know, and that's just the way things are right now. But I mean, you have to have a positive attitude throughout all of it. Um, because I honestly think that like life right now is definitely not like what it was 100 years ago or 200 years ago or 300 years ago. Teaching piano, like, way back then, like, maybe in, like, Beethoven's time or Schumann's time, was probably different because, like, you could get a lot of people, like, a lot of clients who are interested. But right now, it just feels like people might be more interested in other things, like, I don't know, like, staying at home because they don't feel like it's safe to get out of the house or whatever. So, um, yeah, just, um, keep it up and everything. And I hope that you continue to look at the videos on my channel. I am a a composer. As you can see, I have written a lot of different songs since, and these songs have been there since, I mean, I've written these songs since I was really young. Like, I think since I was like six or seven, I started writing. Um, And yeah, they're just there for public listening. I have not published them. Um, Yeah, I know it's weird, but I haven't published them because I just, right now it's just, to me, it's just important to have them out there because, um, you know, maybe someday someone will will listen to it and want to have it because I do know it's mine, so... Um, but yeah, you all have to just stay safe out there and continue to have a positive attitude. Um, and maybe, you know, my story is really, maybe not the most happy, maybe not the happiest story. Um, but I think that having a positive attitude, really just having a positive attitude at the end of the day is the most important thing. Because, you know, things might not work out. Things might never work out. But as long as you stay true to who you are and you keep on doing that for the rest of your life, um, you know, it's always going to be a victory for you. So just keep that in mind. And I really hope that you all uh, just, you know, uh, continue to be the awesome people that you are. And... You know, I love everyone, so thank you for watching this video. I hope that you um, can find some something from it, and and I hope that it can help someone out there somehow. (laughs) Um, But yeah, uh, I'll see you guys around. Bye.